There are people in the house that can truly say, now thank we all our God. Amen. Lift up your voice wherever you are and just thank this God. Celebrate the one that has kept you, that has preserved you, that has helped, held you, that has been everything to you this past three months. God has been faithful. Oh, he's been awesome. He's been kind. There's no God that can compare with him. From everlasting to everlasting, he remains the same God, ever loving, ever kind, ever affectionate, ever great. We magnify you, our Father. We exalt you, O God. Lord in heaven, if the devil had his way, we would not be here today. But here we are, full of life, to your praise and to your glory. We thank you. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for the gift of message. Thank you for kindness. Thank you for love. Thank you, O oh God, for all the grace and the mighty things you've done for us. You alone deserve our praise. You deserve our worship. Blessed be your name, O oh God. Thank you, precious Father. Accept our thanks and our praise. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your holy name. You kept us through January. February, March. Here we are on this first Sunday in the month. It's your mercy that has kept us. It's your love that has preserved us. Lord, we come to return the praise and the glory to you. Thank you for all that you have done. And thank you for that which you will yet do. To you be praise and glory, O oh God. Accept our thanks. Accept our praise. Blessed be your holy name. Before we Pray, I'd like for us to take one prayer point. I don't know about you, but the greatest desire in the heart of God is to be like Jesus. That's the greatest desire for God, for you. The greatest desire for God is not to give you the whole of Canada. It's not to give you the best of houses. That comes as an extra. But the greatest desire in the heart of God is for you to be like his son. He said, till we all come to the fullness of the stature of the nature of Christ. You're going to lift up your voice. You're going to say, Father, make me like Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and talk to him. Oh Lord, make me like Jesus. I want to be like Jesus. In my thoughts, in my purpose, in my actions. In everything that I do, make me like Jesus. Oh, let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. All his glory, all his passion, all his life. Oh, spirit divine, all my nature refined. Till the nature of Jesus becomes my nature. Till the life of Jesus becomes my life. Till my ways becomes the way of Christ. Lord, that is my prayer today, oh God. Let every other thing cease, but let Jesus be elevated. Let me, O oh God, decrease. Let Jesus increase in my life. Oh, Lekiaza Tori Abazata. I want more to be like you, God. Oh, Bahalaya Diaposa Tariada. The more, oh God, Malia Posa Kata, the more I know you, the more I want to know you. Oh, Jesus. Lepaza Ketelia Rabazo Toriana. Make me, make me, O oh God, like Jesus. And I be a little I like also said this song. I want more of you. The more I know you, the more I want to know you. Jesus, more of you. I want more of you. I want more of you. I want. More of you. Jesus, 
Turn of grace wants more of you. More of your life. More of your wisdom. More of your attributes. More of our lives. Let everything about us cease to exist. Let everything about you become manifest in our lives. Oh, more of you. The more we know you, the more let us know you, oh God. Oh, fill us with your fullness. Fill us with your glory. Fill us with your life. Fill us with your power. Fill us with all of you, oh God. That is our heart cry this morning. The more we know you, the more we want to know you. Jesus. Jesus. Father, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we thank you for being a part of this service today. Thank you for filling us with more. Thank you for more. More of you, oh God. More of your life manifesting through our lives. Receive the thanks and the praise, Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Turn to at least three or four people. Tell them there is more. As you have your seats in the name of Jesus. Fragrance of life, the Lord bless you. Hallelujah. How many people are glad to be in the presence of God this morning? It's the first Sunday in April. Let's just celebrate Jesus for his faithfulness and his goodness. He's kept us, he's preserved us. And we are grateful to him for keeping us alive. We thank him. And if the devil wanted, some of us would not be in church today. But we thank God for preserving us. We thank God for keeping us. We thank God for his mercies that is at work in us. May his great name be praised and glorified. Uh, some of us nearly didn't want to come to church today. But grace is available. In Jesus' name. Um, if you recall, for those who were here in January, we did announce that we needed volunteers to support a mission work, a new church work that we're doing in somewhere in North York. And um, we had some people go for three months. Uh, the three months is about rounding up for those people who went. And I made them a commitment that after three months, if they still need the help in that parish, we're well, going to ask for additional volunteers for another three months. So please, I will need at least three or four volunteers who, who would like to go do support the mission work in North York for another three months, so that the people who went for three months can come back. Except if you don't want those people to come back. <laughs> so please, um, just in case you want to volunteer, um, to be a part of the great work that God is doing in North York City, Land of Hope, um, I'd like to kindly request that see me after service, uh, so that we can 
just have that conversation. And those of um, how many people have ordered this this t-shirt or this crew neck or whatever they call it? It's not a hoodie; it's a crew neck. How many people have ordered this? If you have ordered it, there's so few. How many people have not ordered it? Wow. April 26 to 28. There's a service they were going to announce. If you don't wear this t-shirt that day, we'll go put one, we'll go put leg for one shokoto. <laughs> please, I'd like to please encourage you. Let's let's just, let's order one. What we're trying to do is that on the one of the celebration days we're gonna have, we're just gonna celebrate God. And we wanna be we wanna be colorful. So we're going to be wearing our crew necks, our hoodies for that occasion. And it's, it's, it's very affordable. Really, really very affordable. Is it not nice? It's nice now. Tell them it's nice. So, and I'd like to just celebrate and appreciate the team who have done a great job in making this happen. The Lord bless you richly in Jesus' name. What's happening next Sunday, young people? YTS. Now, next Sunday, um, it's, it's not a youth service, but the youths are the ones organizing the service. So please, let's come with a lot of expectation. And by the special grace of God, our lives is not going to be the same again in Jesus' name. You see, one of the things that I see about YTS services is that sometimes the adults say, oh, that is a service for young people. No, it's for all of us. And if God could speak through a donkey, God can speak through anyone. And I believe that God will minister to us mightily in the name of Jesus. Let's not forget April 26, 27, 28, we have our 10th anniversary celebration. There's going to be a lot of the world. There's going to be a lot of music. And then there's also going to be a lot of food. Yes. So please, let's come with a lot of expectation. A lot of expectation. And I believe that God is going to bless each and every one of us in Jesus' name. Uh, lastly, um, on that April the 27th, which is a Saturday morning, 10 a.m., please, all workers and volunteers should please take note. There's a leadership session for you. So please... Let's book it in our calendar. Let's mark that weekend out. Let's make sure that if there's any place we'll be, just that weekend is going to be here. And the Lord will bless us amazingly. Finally, I'd like to just thank everyone who, who sent their prayers. Some visited me on my birthday. A lot of people sent me their gifts. I'd like to warmly appreciate and thank you. Thank you very much for your prayers. Thank you very much for your gifts. Thank you for your calls, and thank you also for everything you've done for me. The Lord bless you richly in Jesus' name. May the God that you have honored in me honor you back in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for your word once more again. Teach us from your word. And let your word transform, quicken, and change us. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 12 I would have loved from, to read from verse 12 to 21, but I would like to kindly request, like the Berean Christians that you are, go back home and read from 12 to 21 of the book of Philippians, chapter 3. But I'll read from verse 12 to verse 14, or I'll read to verse 15, and then I'll leave you to read the rest by the special grace of God when you get back home. Not that I have already attained or I'm already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold on that for which Christ Jesus has laid, has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing, Paul began to tell us one thing, but he ended up telling us more than one thing. He said, but one thing I do, Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to the things which are ahead, I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, as many, not one, as I matured and have this mind, and as many, therefore let us, as many as are mature, have this mind. And if in anything you think otherwise, 
God will reveal even this to you. This morning, I'm going to be speaking on the subject, there is more. There is more. Four years ago, precisely today, one of my nephews was born. And like is a tradition, the doctors will say after this child, they say, please come back again or link up with your family doctor for the first checkup. So after a couple of weeks, it wasn't up to a month, we went to the family doctor. And the family doctor referred us to a pediatrician. So we went to a pediatrician. In, in my mind, I was saying, if an adult goes to the clinic to see a doctor, it is easy for me to say to the doctor, I have come for a checkup. I, I, I don't have any pain, but just do a checkup. So they take, they take blood samples for those who have annual physicals. And do they do your checkup? So the results comes out, and then you know whether you're okay or not. But in my mind, I was wondering, how are they going to check up a child that is less than a month? How are they going to check him up? The nurses put him on the pan, weighed him, took a dimension of his length, and then we waited to see the doctor. The doctor came out to see us. I was worried, very visibly worried. And he said, this baby is not growing. I said, how can this baby not be growing? This is the baby we just came from home. We see this baby every day. He said, no, this baby is not growing. How are you feeding him? How are you doing this? How are you doing that? And for a bit, I was a little bit deep. Stop. I can see this boy doing so well in my own perception. How come you said the baby is not growing? Well, we left. He told us, I shall look at three to four hours every day. Just make sure this boy eats. He told us, come back again under three to four weeks. We went back. And then went through the same procedure. Put the baby in the scale. They took the weight. And then waited to see the doctor. He didn't do anything extra. But just checking the weight from the last time till now, there was a significant difference in weight. And the lady said, okay, things are getting better now. Things are getting better. And it dawned on me at that point in time that the measure of the baby's health was a function of the weight. And as I was preparing this message yesterday, I had God say to me, many of us, are weightless before God. Many of us are not growing. We think we're growing. You see, the irony about life is that so many of us think that growth is a function of the material things we have. We think that growth, spiritual growth, is a function, is a function of oh, oh, how busy we are on a day-to-day -day basis. Sometimes we even think that growth is a function of how often we come to church. But spiritual growth is a function of how you weigh in the presence of God. So the question for you and I this morning, friends, is are you truly growing? Are you truly growing? Are you truly growing? Are you truly growing? We, we can see the activities. We can see the possessions. But is that really growth? God wants every single one of us to grow spiritually. And the measure of your growth, therefore, it is a function of how strong you are spiritually, how strong you are in your walk with God, how strong with you are in your relationship with him. That is why, friends, I want to challenge you this morning. Wherever you are in terms of your growth level, there is more. There is more. 
and small. Please, friends, let's not measure our growth, our attainment, our achievement, or our relationship with God by reason of the things we have acquired in life. Our academics, our good jobs, our nice houses, our nice cars. That is not the measure. Because you know what? The Bible tells me that one day, all of this will fade away. The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 11, that all of this will do what? Will be melted. They will give way. They will be destroyed as, as it were by fire. What makes the difference therefore is, is that the foundation of your spiritual growth must be rooted. So that at the end of the day God can look at you and say yes. You weigh much in my scale. The text of the scripture we read in Philippians chapter 3, reading from verse, the whole of the book of Philippians, Paul wrote that in the prison. In fact, I think Paul wrote about four books, Colossians, Philemon, and Ephesians or so, plus the book of Philippians. He wrote them in prison. And here Paul was saying, despite all the things that Paul have achieved, despite all of his attainments, Despite all the accolades, the miracle worker, yet Paul was saying in prison, I press. I want to know more. I want more. I can myself not to have apprehended, but one thing I do, I want to press for more. Friends, there should be more. Every single one of us we are pressing in, into. There should be more. There should be more spiritual desire in you. Every day there must be a hunger in your heart for more of God. If at any time you cease to hunger for God, know that there is trouble in your life. Anytime you cease to test, yearn for God. The expectation of God, friends, is that every single one of us will grow. That's the expectation of God. Too many people have remained babies for too long. We can't remain babies. In fact, the only area where God wants us to be babies is in malice. The Bible says in, in, in understanding, be men. But when it comes to malice, I said, look, hey, be babies. But many of us have reversed it. In malice, we are mature, we are men. <laughs> That's not what it's supposed to be. Are you growing? Ask your neighbor, are you growing? Ask someone else, are you growing? You see, personal growth or spiritual growth is a personal responsibility. It's a personal responsibility. Your, 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 your husband is not going to help you grow or make you grow rather or com compel you to grow. Your wife cannot compel you to grow. It's a personal responsibility. It's a personal responsibility. That is what the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 2. 1 Peter 2 and verse 2. I think the Passion Translation puts it this way. It says, in the same way that nursing infants cry for milk, you must intensely crave the spiritual milk of God's word. For this milk will cause you to grow into maturity fully nourished and strong for life fully nourished and strong for life fully nourished and strong for life you say you must crave in other words there must be a hard pants to grow there must be a personal choice intentional about growth so when paul was saying i press he was saying, I'm doing it intentionally. You have to take that personal responsibility, friend. Your spiritual growth must be intentional. You must be intentional about it. Paul say, I press. I press. I keep pushing. I keep pushing. I keep pushing. Oh, yes, I may be bound in prison. But is there something else I can do? Can you imagine somebody being in prison for the sake of the gospel? What will you do if you were the one in prison? 
I would just say, ah, let me just say, Lord, I think I've done my bit. You know, uh, they locked me up here, so let's just stay here. But no, even in prison, Paul was asking God, what more can I do? So he, he was busy writing while in prison. In fact, the greatest prayer that Paul prayed were in prison. He says, my little children of whom I do what I travail. In other words, he was in prison and yet he was pushing. He was pushing. He was pushing. He said, I forget the past. Everyone listening to me, if you must be intentional about your growth, you must, be, you must forget the past achievements you have ever had. Oh yes, you used to pray for one hour, but what are you doing now? You used to fast often. What are you doing now? You used to go for street evangelism. What are you doing now? You know, when I was preparing this message, the Holy Spirit was rebuking me. Back in the days when I gave my life to Christ and early into our marriage, my wife and I would go from one prison, police, what do they call this, uh, police cells to the other, preaching every Sunday after service. It was a ritual for us. We'd go and preach. One hour, hold one hour service to, to them, share Christ with them, and then go. It was it was regular ritual. So, and, and the Holy Spirit, when last did I even go out to intentionally preach to someone? Oh, we become very busy. Forget past achievements, friends. Don't let your past keep you from growing. Don't let it. Yes, you paid a lot of sacrifices in the past, but what are you paying now? What are you paying now? What are you paying now? Reaching forward for more. That was what Paul was saying. He said, look, I forget the past. There's something more. Every single one that is hearing the sound of my voice, there's something more. There's something more about your spiritual work. There's something greater. There's something you can engage much more than where you are now. Focus on that more. Focus on that something more. And do a pursuit until you gain it. Paul said, I reach, out, I reach forward for more. I press until I gain the price of his high calling. Friends, how do we think God measures our weight? What do you think that God's measures? I'll just quickly share two or three or four as the case. The time we permit, I will close it there. How will God weigh you? What, what does God measure? What is the measure that God places on us as a sign of growth? What does God look for? One of it is your ability to share Christ. Your sharing of Christ. One of the great divine mandate that God has given to you and I is to share Christ. It says in Matthew chapter 18, 28 verse 19, Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations. That is not excluding anyone. It says, Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In fact, in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, if you read from verse 18 to 19, it says that God has reconciled us to himself and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. He's given you, he's given me the ministry of reconciliation. In other words, heaven is waiting to see how many people you are going to reconcile back to God the Father. It's a mandate. It's a work that God has given to you and I. And everyone must be involved. Everyone must be involved. You must be intentional about it. Therefore, you want to grow, share Christ. And it may just be as simple as telling them your own story. Christ died for me. He lost me and he died for me. It may just be as simple as that. It may just be as simple as that. It may just be as simple as you're having a conversation and somebody says, how are you doing it? And you say, oh, I've given my life to Christ. And whenever this kind of trouble comes, I just hand it over to him. And it's all sit out. I was talking once with one of my Indian friends. And he was saying, oh, Israel, you've been in this country for such a short time. And 
some of us have been in this country for over 30 years. And you've, you've made some major steps in life. How, how are you doing it? And the truth is, I don't know how I'm doing it. It's God. And I said to him, like, what makes the difference is God in my life. He opens up doors for me. If you, if you bring him into your life, he will open up doors for you. He said, really? I said, yes. It's as simple as that, friends. Simple as what? Telling others about Christ. It's as simple as making up your mind intentionally to invite people to church. Bible says, when Jesus was telling them about a parable of the wedding feast in Luke chapter 14, verse 23, he said, the master said, invite them. Call them in into the feast. Invite them. He said, compel them to come in. Friends, you may never can tell how much impact inviting, bringing people, someone into church can make in the life of that person. You may never can tell. You may never can tell. So many years ago, when I entered into the university, my dad paired me with an elderly man. And I said, look, hey, this is my son, my first son. Um, we need you to be a custodian of him. And uh, all of that. Because this man was an old man, you know, well bigger than me. I was very small then. Say, Israel, today, we are going to church. Because I used to go to church. That wasn't a, an issue. But after church, he said, hey, we're going for fellowship. I said, but we just finished church in the morning. Which other fellowship are we going again in the afternoon? He said, well, Israel, this is what I've been doing for the past three, four years. And it's been a blessing to me. Come and try it. And of course, he dragged me. I didn't have any choice. They've handed my life over to him. So I said, okay, let's go. And first time I was in that service of fellowship, I never failed attending that fellowship. Why? It was such a blessing to me. It was such a blessing. But the special grace of God, some of the, the, some of the graces that I carry was rooted because I was in that fellowship. Some of the grace to be patient was rooted because of my activities in the fellowship. So for five years, I was in that fellowship being a child of God. Friends, you may never can tell how much God will transform the life of someone by reason of what? you sharing Christ with them. How do you measure growth? One other way to measure growth that God measures growth is in your how you show love. The love of Christ. Are you sure the love of Christ? John chapter 13, reading from 34 to 35, tells us that Jesus says to you and I, I I'm giving you a new commandment. I'm giving you a new commandment. A new commandment. And this is a commandment. You must love your brother or love one another as I have loved you. That you also would do what we love one another. In other words, it, it is not debatable. It is not, oh, I, I like him. I don't like him. I like her. I don't like her. I just don't like his face. I don't like the way he smiles. No. No. He is from India. So I, I, I don't want to have anything to do with doing him. Oh, he's, he's, he's from the Caribbean. No. There's a mandate on you and I to do what? To love. To love. To love. He says, by this shall all men know. In other words, the evidence that God is looking for to see how you weigh in his scale. He said, by this shall all men know that you do what? That you are my disciples if you have love. That means that many people may, be, may not be disciples because they don't show love. Sometimes it baffles me. How can somebody say his spirit feels full of God and full of growth and yet they are nasty? Abusive. Rude. No altar of manifestation of the love of God. Where is the love? Some of us can't stand one another. I can't stand Where is the love? 
Bible says, by this we know law of 1 John chapter 3 verse 16. Because he laid down his life for us, you ought also to do what to lay down your life for your brother or your sister. Turn to the person next to you. Can you die for me? <laughs> this is not a figure of speech. Oh. This is not a figure of speech. This is scripture. Say so you ought to. You ought to. In other words, even if you can't, heaven is saying you have to. Heaven is saying, I'm entrusting you with the responsibility to do what come to a place where you make up your mind. I am ready to give up something because I love you. I wonder at times, when will a brother fight a brother when they can give up because of love? I wonder at times, where will spouses rain abuses on themselves when they can do what? Do what? Lay down. When they say, Lay, you ought to, it means just, just, just give up that thing you are struggling over. Just, just release that thing you are holding on to. Oh, my ego, so what? Christ laid his life down for you. Oh, he insulted me, so what? Are you the first to be insulted? They insulted your master. The Bible says if you do not suffer with him, you can't die. You can't be glorified with him also. We, we, we've got to understand the concept of love. You see, the, 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 the weight of your spiritual maturity is a function of how you can lay down your life. I'm not saying it's as easy as that. But you see, when you're intentional about it, you make up your mind, in, in, despite what it is this person does to me, I'm going to forgive up front. Maybe there's somebody hearing the sound of my voice. Maybe you've been carrying bitterness and malice for so many years now. Sometimes I wonder why would spouses stay in the same house? One sleeps to the south and that one sleeps to the north. And all they do in the morning is hi. Just because somebody can just lay down. Say, I'm sorry. So that things can move on. Love. Love. Love, love. I think this, the songwriter says, I think Baby Mason or so, says, show me how to love in the true meaning of the word. Teach me to sacrifice, expecting nothing in return. I want to live my life away, becoming more like you each and every day. Show me how to love. May God show you how to love. May God show me how to love. May God show us how to love. May God show us how to love. What other ways can we measure? Or can, does God measure growth? I think they can know they talked about this on, on Friday. When you grow in your study about Christ. You grow in your study about Christ. Friends, being religious is not the same thing as Christ-likeness. It's not. There are too many people in church who are full of activities into religion, but they're not like Christ. They're not like Christ. Not like Christ. Your standard, friends, is not the world. Oh, don't, don't wait for somebody to tell you, oh, this is not what you should do. This is what you should do. Let your standard be Christ. Let my standard be Christ. Our standard must be Christ. Say, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Paul was writing in that same scripture. He, he, he says, follow me as I do what? As I follow Christ. Can you truly say, follow me as I follow Christ? Can you, if, if you look at the content of your life right now, can you say to your brother, can you say to your friend, can you say to your spouse, can you say to them, please, follow me. Some will say, ah, follow you. Huh. Say, but follow me as I follow Christ. Follow me. Christ is the standard, friends. It's the standard. 
So as you read through the word of God, ask yourself, what will Christ do? How will Christ become? The more of the word of God you soak in, the more you realize that it helps you to build and grow. It says, it's a milk that strengthens and makes a difference out of our lives. How else can we do what? Can we, or does God measure growth? One way is, is I think it was also talked about on Friday, is that you grow in your prayer life. So I'm not going to be dwelling more on that. Your prayer life. I believe that nothing will grow as much as your growth in your prayer life is. In other words, nothing will grow you more than your prayer life. The more you are into God in prayers and communication, the more you build up your spiritual muscles, both personal and corporate. How effective are you in your prayer life? But some will say, but pastor, I don't know how to pray. Join groups that pray. Join groups that pray. There's an early morning prayers, 5.30 to 6. There's a Wednesday prayer meeting. That we every now and then on teleconference. Thereby you do what you learn how to pray. What about your own personal altar? Your own personal altar is very, very, very important. If you must grow, that is where you have to meet with God. I think I talk on the last point and I think I close at this point. If you want to grow, God will measure your sacrifice for Christ. Your sacrifice. God to measure your sacrifice for Christ. Some people want to just serve God without sacrifice. Some people want to serve God without sacrifice. Your sacrifice is what you are willing to give up to doing the will of God. That's what your sacrifice is. It is the price you are ready to pay. The price. The price. Oh, oh, friends, if you look at scriptures, you realize that many people paid a lot of sacrifices. People paid sacrifices to bring us the scriptures that we read. Jesus paid a sacrifice to do what? To reconcile us back to the Father. Friends, if you must grow, God will want to see your sacrifice. In Luke chapter 9 and verse 23, the Bible says, If anyone desires to come after me and grow, let him do what? Let him deny himself. Take up his cross. Last weekend we celebrated Christ. We celebrated Easter. But how, how many people are ready to pay a sacrifice for God? How many? How many? How, how many people are ready to say, Lord, I am ready to do anything for the sake of your kingdom? I'm ready to give up everything for the sake of your kingdom. Paul said, I press because there's a prize that's ahead. I am ready to pay the sacrifice. There's some sets of parables that I like reading often. The parables of Christ in Matthew chapter 13 that talks about the kingdom of heaven. And Two of the parables says that the kingdom of heaven is like a man who found a precious pearl, a precious jewel. And the Bible says he gave up everything to go for it. Gave up everything. Another one of the parables, you know, from chapter verse 44 says that the kingdom of heaven is like a man that found a field that has a great what? And he went, sold everything he had, and then purchased that field. Friends, the question is, what are you giving up for the one that died for you? What are you giving up? What are you giving up? Sacrifice is required in the kingdom. It's required. It's required. It's required. Then there are different sacrifices. If you look at scripture, there are different sacrifices that God expects. There's a sacrifice of humility that God expects, of brokenness. 
A broken and a contract heart, the Bible says God will not despise. Psalms 51 verse 17, it says the sacrifice pleasing to God is a broken spirit. Humility that soars and bows at the face of the master. And say, Lord, just you to you. Just you to you. Are you to you? Are you to you? You know, one what, what of the things that I found out is that sometimes when we worship in church, sometimes the Holy Spirit will say to some of you, can you kneel down and just worship me? But for some people, they say, ah, if I kneel down now, what will people say? Oh, I've been there before, so I know. Oh, you lift up your holy hands and then you, you just feel like lying prostrate on the ground. Say, ah, you stain your cloth. Broken and a contract heart. Hebrews 13, 16 talks about other sacrifices. It's a sacrifice of doing good and sharing. They are, don't forget to do good and to share with those in need. These are the sacrifices that pleases God. These are the sacrifices that pleases God. When, friends, you make up your mind that everything that God gives you, not all of it is for the eating. That's a sacrifice. Some of it should be to bless others. The question is, friends, have you come to a place where every day of your life you are measuring yourself and you're asking God, Lord, what should I do with my resources? And I say that because one of the things that control us more is the God of money. Oh, we can think of going to the shop, you know, and then just buy all the buyables. Just enter into hot Bay and then just swipe the card. But when a brother says, hey, please, um, even without a brother saying, and God, Holy Spirit says to you, can you get that person something? Say, ah, but, but, but uh, this is Canada now. It's Canada. Let me just say, uh, God will take care of you. God will take care of you. It says the sack, don't forget to do good. In other words, God is waiting in heaven to see how much good you will do with the resources he's blessed you with. So every time you want to go into the mall and buy that dress, ask yourself, do you really need it? Do you really need it? I told us the story here when I was one day when I wanted to buy one wristwatch that I really liked. As I picked up the wristwatch and I was going to pay, I had something say to me, don't buy it. Now because you're going to spend that money, give that money to somebody else. The sacrifice of doing good. The Bible talks about Colinius. It says, your sacrifices have come unto me as a memorial. In other words, heaven is looking to see what sacrifices you're going to place on the altar. Every single one who will grow, God is waiting to see your sacrifices on the altar. Some of us, we dodge phone calls from Nigeria. Yeah, you understand. So he's been calling me every time, every time, every time. Could that, be, could that just be a seed that God is asking you to sow into the life, life of someone? Well, I'm not saying that people should abuse privileges. But I'm saying, in other words, you should make up your mind to be intentional about your sacrifices towards people. What about the sacrifice of your service? Time is not going to permit me to talk about that. God wants your service. One of the only prayers, two prayers that Jesus Christ asked, asked prayed for. If you look at scriptures, every other thing Jesus was thanking God. Thank you for the bread and bread came. Thank you for this. He was just thanking God. He saw somebody who was blind or lame. He just thanked God and then healed them. But when he came to unity, he said, Father, please make them one. The second prayer that Jesus Christ prayed, he said, For Lord, send laborers because there's so much to do, but there are few. Are you, are you among the few? You are among the few. There's more, my friend. Life is beyond living, waking up every day, go to work, come back, sleep, go through the same routine without something to present before the master. 
When all is said and done, when everything, all the accolades we have strived for have come and gone, what we haven't hold in account for you. What we haven't hold in account for you. What we haven't hold in account for you. May God give us wisdom. May God give us wisdom. There's one more sacrifice that is called the sacrifice of thanksgiving. God wants that sacrifice. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 15 and I close with this scripture. Therefore let him let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. Psalms 50 and verse 23 I think the New Living Translation puts it this way. By giving thanks is a sacrifice that truly honors God. In other words, thanksgiving is a sacrifice that truly honors God. And you see, thanksgiving is not thanksgiving until you are in a place where things are hard and difficult, yet you can still say, Lord, I thank you. Though he slay me, Lord, I thank you. Though this life is painful, Lord, I thank you. Things are not adding up, but Lord, I thank you. Lord, this is not what I bargained for, but Lord, I thank you. That's an acceptable sacrifice. Oh, it, it is good to thank God when God does things for us, but do you thank God when God has not done the thing you are expecting for him to do yet? Do you thank him? Do you thank him? Do you thank him? Friends, there's more, there's more, there's more, there's more. Somebody may be hearing me now and say, how do I measure up in all of this? How do I measure up? How, how can I really achieve all this high mark set, set by Christ? How? But I can hear Father Jacob saying, do you know what I was? But I pushed for more. Do you know how I started? I was a con man. I cheated my brother of his inheritance. Oh, I was a liar. I defrauded even my uncle. And on and on. But if I can make it, you can make it. If I can push, you can push. Oh, there came a time in my life I said, I separated myself from everybody. I said, I need more. And I wrestled with God until the breaking of the day. If I can do that, you can do it. Friend, what is that new height you want to trust God for spiritually? What area do you want to grow more? I'd like to challenge you this morning. Press. In the press of sharing Christ. Press. In the place of loving more. Intentionally. Press. In the place of study of the world. Press. In the place of prayer. Press in the place of sacrifice. Can you stand to your feet? Lift up your voice and talk to God. I want more of you. The more I know you, the more I want to know you. Choir, help me with that song. We'll sing it once and then we'll take a prayer point. I'm going to be praying and asking God, Lord, I want more. I want more. I want more. I want more. I want a deeper hunger. Oh, I want to grow more. I want to grow more. I want a deeper roots in you. I want more. Lift up your voice. To so sing the song once. Make my life beautiful. You make my life so beautiful. And as you are you have made me here on earth there's nothing greater than these that's why i love you forevermore you make my life so beautiful And as you are, you have made me here on earth. There's nothing greater, there's 
nothing greater than peace. That's why I love you forevermore. I want more of you. I want more of you, Jesus. The more I know you, the more I want to know you, Jesus, more of you. Lift up your voice and say, Father, I want more of you. Grow me deeper. Grow me stronger. It fill me with your fullness. Lift up your voice and talk to God this morning. Oh Lord, we want more of you. Oh, grow us deeper, grow us stronger. Let us experience you like never before. Oh, create in us a hunger and a task for you, God. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Grow us more, deepen our roots in you. Establish us, oh God. Let our knowledge of you, oh God. Let our relationship with you be stronger. Walk and walk in us. My life cannot remain like this. Change my life. Let it be patterned after the order of Christ. Let Christ be formed in us. Let the nature of Christ, let the fullness of Christ, let the life of Christ, let it be formed in us, O God. That is our prayer today, O God. That is our prayer today. That the fullness of Christ will be formed in us. That the totality of Christ will reflect in us. That for us to live shall be Christ and to die again. We yield our members to you. We surrender ourselves to you. We say have your way in our lives. And let your name be praised and glorified. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. All heads bowed, all eyes closed. Maybe you're here. Jesus is not the Lord and the Savior of your life. You can't really say that if you die now, you know where you're going. You can't be sure. You're not very sure that if you die now, you're going to make it to heaven. I'd like to pray for you. I'd like you to just lift up your hand. Say, Jesus, come into my heart. I see your hand there, my friend. Just, just lift up your hand. You want to say, Jesus, I'd like you to say after me, say, Dear Lord, I surrender my life to you. I know I'm a sinner. This morning, I ask you to forgive my sins. Come into my heart. Change my life. Give me the strength and the power to live to serve you all the days of my life thank you holy spirit for dwelling in me and for giving me a new life thank you in jesus mighty name we pray please after service i'd like you to see me we'll just talk briefly father we want to thank you thank you for everyone in your church both those watching online and those who in, here in person lord we want more we want more of you Oh, let it be a hunger and a thirst for you. Lord, I pray that, Lord, you will cause us to mature till we come to the fullness of the stature of Christ. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in us. Let the love of Jesus be seen in us. Oh, may we manifest the kingdom glories and principles that you stand for in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, everything hindering the fullness of our growth, Everything hindering us from being who you've ordained for us to become. We break that hole this morning in the name of Jesus. Fill us with your fullness, oh God. We rededicate and recommit our lives to you. Our Lord, we we'll love you and serve you all the days of our lives. We take roots downwards and grow upwards. We we'll mature. Be those men and women that will bring you glory. Bring you honor. Our lives will testify of your goodness in the land of the living. May you weigh us and say to us, well done, 
good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your master. May none of us miss heaven in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. We celebrate you, God. We give you thanks and we give you praise. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. If you believe that God has done something for you, shout a big living amen.